Well, a historic moment for space history happened earlier this week. India has become the first country to successfully land a spacecraft towards the south pole of the moon. The Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, exclaimed, India is now on the moon after the spacecraft touched down. The moon craft took off from a launch pad in southern India on the 14th of July, taking over a month to get there after orbiting Earth several times. Inside the lander is a six-wheeled rover, which will roam the moon's surface together uh, to gather images and data. Scientists believe that the moon's craters that are permanently in shadow may hold frozen water. If found in significant quantities, the ice water may allow future crew missions to set up base there, as it could be used to extract oxygen and fuel. Well, joining me now to discuss this very exciting issue is astronaut, space advocate and adventurer Per Wimmer. Now, Per, this is a very exciting time for space exploration, isn't it? Because uh, there was a disappointment of a Russian probe crashing just last week into uh, the moon. And then this happens on the southern pole, which is quite difficult to get to, isn't it? It is. It's, it's actually the uh, second time we, we're landing on the difficult spot. Yes. All, the, all the moon missions so far, including the Apollo program, etc., landed on the uh, bright side of the moon, not yes. the dark side. There's only been one successful landing on the dark side before this mission, and that was the Chang'e 4 mission by the Chinese in 2019, which very cleverly and with the great help of NASA, ESA, uh, landed on the dark side of the moon. Mm. So it ain't easy uh, mm. once you go into these outer part of the, uh, of the moon. And the South Pole certainly would qualify because part of the South Pole is dark. Yeah. And, and why, given that it's difficult, why do people want to go to the South Pole? What, what's the attraction? Uh, it is hugely attractive from a number of perspectives. First of all, scientifically, because there is frozen water there, ice, um, a lot of the history is effectively frozen in there. So from a scientific ah. point of view, understanding the history of the moon, the history of how that was created with the Earth, etc., we can actually unlock a lot of those secrets mm -hmm. in there. So they're no, they're no doubt hidden. And secondly... Uh, you have uh, hydrogen and oxygen there. Oxygen you can use if you split out those atoms. Mm -hmm. You can use it for breathing, uh, yes. which is helpful if you want to go and establish a permanent base on the moon. And hydrogen, if you want to use it for fuel to fly further uh, from a base on the moon into Mars, for instance. So just, um, and, and you're the expert here, I'm only the amateur in all of this, but I find it fascinating. So if you were going to Mars, you could then go to the moon, first of all, uh, and then not have to carry all of the fuel that you need to get to Mars because you could refuel on the moon. Is that the idea? That's the idea. And, yeah. and that would uh, mean a lot of weight savings. And weight saving is cost savings and, and making it easier. But when you leave the Earth uh, with a rocket, the, the heavy lifting and a lot of the fuel is actually burned, leaving gravity. Sure. Uh, so if you can save that and have a base already out there, yeah. that means you can be much more efficient going from the moon and then onwards into Mars. So this is part of the human exploration going further and further into space, into deeper space. So Per, this must be very exciting for you because it feels like for a while space and the final frontier and all of that had fallen away because in the 1960s and 70s there was a lot of exploration going on at that time, but then it seems to have fallen back a bit. So this, this has really started it all off again, hasn't it? Absolutely. We are right now going through a new era of space exploration and excitement. Mm. Just like it was in the Apollo era in the late 60s, early 70s, where, where the, all the cameras were tuned in. Sure, sure. And what has really made the difference after uh, decades of, shall we say, less interest in space, has been the infusion of a lot of private capital into the space. Mm. NASA's budget is about 14 billion a year. You now have more ca private capital in excess of that 40 billion going into this uh, into the private space and when private enterprise gets involved mm -hmm. you get more efficiency you get cheaper more innovative solutions etc and that can then leverage uh, agencies like nasa uh, focusing their resources on the more difficult bit, i.e. not the rocket bit, getting there, the transportation, but actually on the exploration and what happens further out in the deeper universe. So it's a win-win, uh, but the entry of private enterprise has made a huge difference, mm. and we are right now at the cusp of a very exciting era for space exploration, mm. which... On a personal note, I'm terribly excited about <laughs> because I'm going uh, into space next year. Oh goodness! Tell us about all of that. Yeah, so this is this is going to this is a, a long long term life dream uh, of mine going into space. I'm an adventurer. Uh, yeah. I've done a number. I've visited 84 countries on Earth. I've lived with the Indians in the Amazon. Uh, 
in 2008, uh, I was the first person to do a tandem skydive over Mount Everest. So I've done a lot of these exciting adventures here on Earth. But space is the ultimate fr frontier. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's where I want to go. And that's where I'm going next year. Amazing. Well, we'll certainly be watching out for you in GB News. Per, thank you so much for coming in and having the discussion because, of course, it's not just about glory. It is about those resources on the moon. And I think that's what people need to understand, that it's not just about uh, India, China, Russia and America trying to see who can do the first to do whatever. It's actually about resources and then using those resources. I think that's the important thing. Yeah, and it's also about international collaboration. Correct. Interestingly enough, uh, whilst on planet Earth, we have all sorts of political controversy even wars when it comes to space we're actually collaborating yeah even the even the uh, the recent uh, nasa rocket that went up had uh, had people from countries that are fighting wars at the moment so so it, it is really genuinely collaborating and i think the indians specifically here bring a lot to the table i mean yeah. th this was a major feat they did not only would that rocket inspire a lot of indian engineers mm. um, and and the young kids and stuff like that but also India has a particularly strong um, uh, strength in, in, in developing space cheaply. To put that uh, probe on the surface costs less yeah. than $75 million, yeah. which is less than one of the blockbuster movies. I mean, oh, goodness. <laughs> the, the, the margin cost $108 yeah. million. Yeah. The uh, gravity cost $100 yeah. million. So yeah. they, they're really good in, in low costs. Well, Per, we, you and I could talk about this all day, but I'm afraid I have other guests coming on. So thank you so much.